is the UK mortgage war over already? You know, that savior of the UK housing market that we've had forced down our throats for the past month or so, all of a sudden seems to be grinding to a halt and potentially going into reverse. So that's what I wanna talk about in this video. What is happening with the mortgage war? What is happening with mortgage rates, interest rates, and how potentially that's gonna have a huge impact on what happens to the housing market and house prices throughout 2024. And there are two things to keep in mind when you're thinking about the mortgage war and mortgage rates. It's number one, it has a direct impact on affordability. But number two, and this is probably the most important thing, with the way it's covered in the media, it has a massive impact on sentiment in the market. And there are so many things that make up the housing market, but sentiment is probably the most important factor. So if there is a positive or negative spin on this particular element, then that can have a big impact on the housing market and house prices. You can imagine the situation, a buyer that all of a sudden sees they can get a lower mortgage rate and maybe can afford more than they could six months ago, will potentially bid a bit higher when they go to offer on a house. Or some of these sellers are still sitting there with their unrealistic asking prices that they've been stuck out for the past year, might be tempted to just hold on that little bit longer for that unicorn buyer that's gonna appear and snap up their overpriced property. So that's what I want to talk about in this video. What has happened to cause the mortgage war to suddenly grind to a halt and potentially go into reverse? And how is this going to play out for the rest of the year? So firstly, let me just hide the webcam, or should I say, let me just shrink the webcam so you guys can see the screen behind me. And I'm sure you guys are probably fed up of seeing headlines like this, especially if you're hoping for house prices to go down a bit further. We've seen Nationwide intensifies mortgage price fall with its lowest ever deal. HSBC joins mortgage rate cutting drive with deals below 4%. UK mortgage price war set to cheer borrowers. UK house prices see a slight uplift in January. Mortgage rates are falling. How low could they go in 2024? This has been forced down our throats since the turn of the year, but is the tide changing? If you dive a bit deeper into the less common news article, you'll see over the past week or so, we're starting to see headlines like this. Mortgage news, Nationwide and Virgin raise rates as the Bank of England holds at 5.25%. And if you scroll down a bit further, Nationwide is increasing rates for new borrowers from the 2nd of February. They're not the only ones. Barclays has increased selected fixed rates for existing borrowers. And we've also got NatWest has announced the withdrawal of its two and five year fixed rate purchases and remortgage at 90% loan to value from the 1st of February. So what is causing this change of heart amongst the lenders when it's supposed to be this price war going on? Well, there are many, many elements at play. You have basically global uncertainty and there are so many things I could do probably a two hour video on that. So I'm not gonna go into that today, but there's lots of global uncertainty. So I'm gonna try and more focus on things that directly relate to the UK. So in the middle of January, we had the latest inflation report, which wasn't as positive as some people were hoping it was going to be. And if we just scroll down very briefly, as I'm sure you guys have watched lots of videos about the last inflation report, we saw that CPIH, which includes housing costs, that went sideways in December and just basic CPI, that went up from 3.9 to 4%. So very, very small tick up. And if we go and find the chart, you'll see here, it's just a very, very tiny tick up, but it was enough to spook the markets just a little bit and to take away that momentum, which will become clear in a graph that I'm gonna show you much later on in this video. And also services inflation is still very, very sticky. If I can find it, let me scroll down to the right table. Where is it? services inflation is still at 6%. So it's all well and good energy costs coming down, all of the things that are outside of the government or Bank of England control. But if services is still at 6%, can the Bank of England realistically start cutting rates anytime soon? I don't think so. And I think the markets are starting to wake up to this realization that they are front running the Bank of England a bit too much. Yes, we're expecting interest rates to come down in the long term. But we've seen predictions that rates will start to come down at the end of 2023. That's been proven wrong. The first meeting at 2024, it hasn't come down either. And it's looking very unlikely that the next meeting as well is going to be a cut. So I think the markets are kind of backing up a little bit from how quick rates may come down all the time that things like services are at that level, because this is the problem that's starting to become a bit more unique to the UK and less so for other countries. So inflation is still a very real problem. And that's part of the consideration when the Bank of England meet. And at the last meeting a few days ago, they decided to keep rates at 5.25%. And this is a summary. Higher interest rates are working to reduce inflation. 
Well, inflation is definitely coming down. Whether their higher interest rates is directly having an impact, we're not certain. You know, how much of it is outside of their control? Probably a large chunk of it. Inflation could fall to our 2% target within a few months before rising slightly again. Look at that, trying to manage expectations. So in a few months, when inflation maybe ticks up again or maybe a bit further than they're expecting, they can say that this is all part of the plan. We will keep interest rates high for long enough so inflation settles at 2%. And just to follow up on that last point there, they also say, we expect inflation to fall, though with some bumps along the way, it could briefly drop to 2% in the spring before increasing slightly again. We will keep interest rates higher for long enough to get inflation back to 2% target in a lasting way. Now, what that says to me is they're not gonna cut early until they're certain it's gonna keep it at that 2% target. But we've seen mixed I guess mixed reports from different people at the Bank of England speaking with different interpretations of what that actually means. But really, if they're doing their job properly, they shouldn't really be cutting rates until it is either definitely going down to 2% and staying there or it's been there for a little while and is staying there. So I think overall, the Bank of England are trying to communicate this message to people that we are gonna cut rates eventually, but we wanna see a bit more evidence. But at the same time, you should take all Bank of England predictions with a pinch of salt. I've opened up a few reports over the past year to show you how accurate or inaccurate these guys actually are. So let's just focus on this solid kind of teal blue line there. So this one here is from February 2023. So this is from a year ago. The Bank of England fault rates were going to peak at 4.5%. And by this time in 2024, they'll be at 4.25%. So we know they were wrong there. So a few months later, in May 2023, they thought the Bank of England base rate was going to peak at 4.75%, wrong again. And then in August last year, they thought that the Bank of England base rate was going to peak at over 6%. So they were wrong again. So what are they saying at the moment? They think we've peaked at the moment and the interest rates are going to come down. And by the middle of 2024, we're going to be below well, about 4.75%. Well, I can't see that happening based on the fact they didn't cut in this meeting. And then they're going to come down to 4% by the end of 2024, which is going to mean basically five cuts this year if they do it a quarter of a point at a time. So I think there's every chance when we look at this same diagram in next month's report, it's going to change again and they're going to be proven wrong again. So try not to pay too much attention to the Bank of England's predictions because historically over the past year, they have been wrong, 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 and probably wrong again. The other thing to keep in mind is that the Bank of England only actually meet approximately every six weeks. So there's only eight meetings in this calendar year. So we've already had February. That leaves seven more meetings this year for them to make a cut. Now, if we go back to what the vote split was at the most recent meeting, at its meeting ending on the 31st of January 2024, the MPC voted by a majority of six to three to maintain bank rate at 5.25%. But what's more important is two members still voted to increase the bank rate, only one person. So one out of nine voted for a cut, two voted for an increase, and six voted for a hold. So it's unlikely we're gonna see a material change in the stats before March. I think things are gonna be very, very similar. I think there's gonna be another hold in March. So the first time they can really consider a cut is probably May. The question you've got to ask yourself is, are you gonna see another four people from that committee go to a cut preference? That's what we need to get to. We need to get to that majority. And if it does happen in May, potentially that is the period where the Bank of England said we actually might expect to see a pickup in inflation again. Remember, we're expecting it to drop a bit and then come back up. And if that happens, can you see them cutting rates if the latest inflation report has just shown that inflation has ticked up again? So if we're to get to their prediction of 4% by the end of this year, we've got to see five cuts between probably May and December, which I think is unlikely. And I think that's why the mortgage lenders are starting to back up being so aggressive with their lending because they think that the rates are gonna be higher for longer. Remember, the rates at which lenders lend is based on where they think the Bank of England are gonna go, not where the Bank of England currently is. That's why over the past year, we saw mortgage rates go up long before the Bank of England did. So following the mini budget, mortgage rates screamed up to 6% very, very quickly. But the Bank of England didn't get to 5.25% until last summer. And what we're seeing is this is now happening in reverse. The lenders think that long term, the Bank of England will bring the rates down. So they front run the market, but they've gone a bit too quick and then they're backtracking a little bit. So they're starting to pull some of the deals and to hike some of their rates. In addition to this, we've also seen 
the Fed, so Jerome Powell in America, who is effectively the same as our the governor of the Bank of England in the UK, he said that they're expecting free cuts this year in 2024, so the US Federal Reserve can be prudent in deciding when to cut its benchmark interest rate with a strong economy allowing central bankers time to build confidence. Inflation will continue falling. The prudent thing to do is just to give it some time and see that the data confirms that inflation is moving down to the 2% target in a sustainable way. The big, big difference with America is generally we'll follow suit and do what America does. America's economy, on paper at least, is holding up a lot better than the UK economy. So they can take this wait and see approach because they're not necessarily tanking their economy as hard as we are. So they can say, look, we don't have to cut the rates that quickly. All the time, the economy is looking nice and strong. We can hold rates higher to really make sure that inflation is destroyed. Whereas in the UK, our economy is so weak, it's so teetering on the edge. We do not have that flexibility. So if they're talking about holding back cuts, we really can't go before them. Otherwise, it can make the pound look really weak, and that's going to cause more inflation. So we... We're going to be led by the US again, most likely, but they're the ones that are going to dictate what we do because our economy is so weak and theirs is strong, so they have flexibility in being patient, and we don't. And all of this is being reflected in the gilts and the swaps. So this is this five-year interest rate swap, and we've covered this chart many times over the past year or so as it's been going up, and what caused the intense rate war that we saw really in the first kind of two weeks of January was this dip here so we saw let me just hide the webcam so you guys can see we saw the rate suddenly drop from just under four or well, four point three percent there down to just over three point six so there was a sudden drop in the space of what's that that's the 8th of december until the 25th of december so just in two weeks we saw quite a substantial drop and that is why we saw a lot more aggression from lenders in the uk trying to land new business but since then since the turn of the year we have seen this starting to slowly tick back up and potentially, potentially, we're now forming a new level of support around that 4% mark. So the question is, will we stay around 4%? My gut feeling tells me now we're going to see us stay around this area for at least the first quarter and then the second quarter is going to be very dependent on how inflation reacts after the drop that we're expecting over the next month or two, how it then bounces back. So that's where we are with the mortgage war. How will it affect sentiment? Well, that's very much depends on how the mainstream media reports on it. If they report on it honestly, they should be saying, look, mortgage rates are probably as low as they're going to go for the near term. Maybe come summer, things might get substantially better. But I think any movement at the moment is going to be very minor either way, unless we see some sort of a major event, which is quite possible with how much global uncertainty we've got. So that is where we are with the mortgage war. Things are definitely slowed down. I don't think we're going to see the headlines we've seen over the past month. I think we're going to see a very positive response in market activity and potentially house prices maybe blipping up again over the next month or two in response to this. But I think we may then see another slowdown as this renewed enthusiasm kind of peters out after some of that pent-up demand from last year. There's lots of people last year who wanted to move and held off, and there's lots of sellers who wanted to sell last year and held off. And we're seeing kind of an influx of activity at the moment. And I think that will peter out quite quickly if mortgage rates don't continue going down, which I don't think they're going to do for the next quarter at least and maybe longer, depending on how all of the other factors combine, of course. Now, if you want to see my latest thoughts on the housing market, there is a link to my Twitter profile in the pinned top comment. And what I'm going to do now is pop up a video which talks you through a shocking discussion that I had with a mortgage lender that could potentially impact your view on the housing market. So I'm going to pop up that video now and I'll see you guys over there.